for, for B2B buying processes and buying processes for more complex products. Um, to introduce myself, my name is Hillary Murdoch. I lead product marketing here at 3Kit and look forward to taking you through the upfront and passing it over to my colleague, Will Thompson, who will cover the more exciting stuff, which is of course our, our product demo, demo showing you all how to, how to use this. So we'll get started. Uh, we'll walk through the buying journey for complex products today and some of the issues that exist therein. Uh, we'll talk about 3Kit Visual Discovery, uh, 3Kit Discovery AI to help solve these problems. Go through some demos and some of the benefits and results that we're seeing from the implementations that we've already done. And we'll have plenty of time at the end for our question uh, and answer. If you want throughout the pro um, throughout the uh, presentation, go ahead and pop in chat. You can ask some questions there. Um, we'll answer them along the way or, or wait till the end and answer them at that time. So first, the problem we're solving here, buying high value complex products is incredibly complicated. We're talking differing processes depending on what the product is. We're talking lots of different stakeholders and having the ability to bring others into the buying process. And what we're finding is that buyers are under supported so they don't have the education perhaps and the guidance to make good decisions or make sound decisions with confidence about what they're buying again for something that is relatively high value they're also incredibly overwhelmed and that's what this image that we put together is meant to represent it might not be exactly how every complex product purchase goes but it shows a lot of the barriers it shows a lot of the complication that exists when you're trying to buy a complex product. And we eyed this as something that both our customers and prospects coming in were expressing to us. So we knew it was a really important issue to solve. And complicating this is the fact that most B2B buyers or buyers of complex products want to explore without assistance. They don't necessarily want to decide they need to buy something and want to call a salesperson that day and say, hey, walk me through this process. I don't know very much. I need your help. They want to treat it almost as if it's an e-commerce buy, right? We're all consumers at heart. We've all been trained how to shop online. And that's the same kind of behavior that B2B buyers want to demonstrate for these kind of purchases, the problem is it's not set up for that. And we've been relying on salespeople for far, far too long. We've come to the point where buyers just don't want to deal with salespeople. So how can we solve that problem? There's what we call a guidance gap between, say, arriving at a site and actually making a purchase. For, when it comes to inspiration, most, most buyers are getting that off your site, off a brand site, right? We're talking social networks. We're talking looking up videos on YouTube to get education, going to Reddit boards and asking questions and getting really reliable responses there or going on a Pinterest or a house to be able to actually visualize what they want. And then at the end here, there's purchase, right? With the help of sales or even a direct transaction online, that's an issue that's kind of been solved. It's this in-between part where Buyers really need education and guidance when they're exploring to understand your product, when they're getting to the point where they want to select the right product. That's a gap that exists where, again, they don't want to deal with the salesperson, but they don't have enough guidance to do it on their own. And that's where we've developed some solutions. So 3Kit differentiates brands with a guided buying experience that is really critical during this exploration and decision period. The idea is to guide and educate to win the sale. And the products that we've developed around this um, leverage AI uh, for product discovery and product guidance. And then also we have visual configuration, which is kind of three kits, bread and butter. If there's a highly customizable product, we allow the end user to visualize that, to build that product in real time and actually see what the result will be. Today, we're really going to focus on the discovery AI portion. And again, that is they arrive at your site. What do I do next? How do I get instant guidance? How do I build confidence that I can start to make this purchase on my own? 
So Discovery AI is, like I said, a guided buying experience. Imagine rather than arriving at maybe a homepage that is overwhelming, that has a lot of different options in navigation where you can search and perhaps filter, but you don't know enough about the product itself, say a custom door, to even start to make those decisions. Um, they're, they might be asking you questions or relying on you to filter down according to specifications that you're not even sure about, whether it be size or width or, you know, the energy efficiency that you're required to have for wherever you live. All of those things that you actually need some prompts and some help along the way to make those decisions. And that's what Discovery's AI, AI is, is designed to do. So, sorry. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, there are two kind of components to this experience at the most basic level. There's the buyer input side where you're starting to give some clue or the buyer is starting to give some clues about what they need. And it enables our system to start to build that profile, right? To learn a little bit about what you want that will then inform the rest of the buying process. And on the right side is this responsive product gallery that's presenting products to you based on every new piece of information that you're giving it. We break these down into kind of different features. So you can have inspirational image prompts. Um, again, for the idea behind a custom door, what's the style of your home or what style are you going to? And then actually providing some visual cues that enable you to answer. I not, might not know the exact name for the style of my home, but I can take a look at any one of these and say, oh, it most closely aligns with modern or traditional. Um, and it just, again, starts to build that profile, starts to give a little bit of inspiration. And for these really complex products, what we're trying to do is provide all of the options within a portfolio that apply to the input that you're giving, but we're also trying to kind of narrow down, right? There's, you know, these product portfolios of custom doors can be massive and it can be really overwhelming for a buyer that doesn't know that much about custom doors and the buying process, right? And what they might need. We're trying to give them some prompts that enable us to narrow down further, further in and zero in on one or two options that make sense for the buyer. And again, help them build that confidence to make the purchase. We also have AI powered text search. So the nice thing about this, and you'll see this more as we get into our demos, it's not just understanding keywords or relying the relying on the buyer to understand the exact terminology needed to get to a good solution. It actually understands intent. It derives meaning from entire phrases rather than just knowing what a SKU number is or what a product name is. And it does what we call fuzzy matching. And again, we'll get um, into that a bit more with the demos, but that's all about the idea of you don't need to know the exact terminology. It is going to, through AI, it's going to gather the relevant products within your por portfolio without you having to be an expert on that portfolio. And again, the responsive product gallery. So you're entering in every new input and then it's presenting everything within the portfolio that aligns with these new inputs and probably getting, you know, decreasing the number of options as you provide more and more information. The nice thing about this too is as you get closer to a, a potential solution, you're able to shop for products side by side to comparison shop without going into different product pages and clicking around and trying to remember, oh, that last thing that I looked at, how does it compare to this one? You're aligning everything that, that aligns with your needs right up against each other and enab enables you to actually look at the solution side by side, which is another nice advantage. Another feature is image upload and match, especially when you're thinking about home goods, building um, materials, furniture even. A lot of times you're taking inspiration either from other places that you've been online, say a Pinterest or a house, or you're out in the wild, right? And you see a beautiful door that you really like and think to yourself, oh, I want something like that, right? This enables you to take that image, upload it to the system, and this you know, in, within this commerce experience, the brand is going to deliver the closest available products within their portfolio that match up with that. 
Um, so it's a really intelligent solution that uh, enables and really empowers people to find inspiration on places other than the website, but actually apply what they've seen elsewhere directly to the portfolio of the site that they're on. And again, talking about complex products, um, a lot of uh, folks here on this on this call or a lot of our prospects aren't building a specific product, a customizable product. They're huddling together and bundling together groups of products to solve a pro problem. So if you think about, for example, you know, AV solutions, you're trying to outfit an entire conference room with everything you'll need for all the meetings that you're having in there, whether it be brainstorms, you know, huge company pitches, whatever it may be. So having a comfort, an intelligent conversational guide that actually presents recommended products based on, again, the input you're giving it. What are you using this for? Well, I'm using it for a huddle room. Okay, well, here are the basics of what you need. Tell me who's using it. Tell me um, how else, you know, how other people within your company might want to leverage the space. Who are the people involved? And actually building that cart, building that solution via a text conversation, rather than having someone have having someone come in and kind of have to guess about what they might need. It's an ongoing exchange that really replicates what your best salesperson would do. Um, and then explains the results as they're giving them. It's not just saying, here, you have to buy this. You need this because X, Y, Z. Again, that confidence mes messaging helps the buyer to um, feel comfortable in the process as they're building what can be really be a complex solution. So I've given you kind of broken out and dissected what are some of the features of our discovery solution. Right now I'm gonna hand, hand it over to Will and he'll start going through some of these demos. And I think this is a great way to, to bring it to life and bring it into even more clarity. So Will? Thank you, Hillary. Uh, I don't seem to have permissions for my video, so I'm sorry, everybody. You have to look at my outdated thumbnail where I had my nice mullets. Um, <laughs> I'm going to show two demos today, two different flavors of uh, these visual discovery utilities. Um, so let's begin with me attempting to share my screen if I can figure this out. Sorry, everybody. Off to a roaring start here. Okay, I promise this is not my first time sharing a screen. Great. So before I jump to this demo, I kind of wanted to set the scene and tell you what um, the experience of, of shopping for a door for this brand is today. Um, so to kind of set the scene a little bit, um, users that land on, on uh, this door manufacturer's site, they're not looking to add a door to cart, right? This is not um, a direct sale experience. You're not going to purchase the door on the e-commerce site. Um, the buyers are making an emotional decision. They're trying to determine if this brand has a style that is right for them, if the doors have features that match their lifestyle or their climate. Um, and they're just really trying to see if this brand is right for them. Because the next step in that buying journey is to invite a dealer or a sales representative into their home. Um, and that's a high consideration motion, especially for people in, this, in, the, in the world today that are um, you know, less likely or, or less... Um, excited, so to speak, to to reach out to a sales rep. Um, so in order for them to get that confidence today, they have to land on this website. They download this brochure, which has probably 120 pages of content. They read the brochure. Then they go to the commerce site and they scroll through the page and they are faced with thousands and thousands of potential options that may or may not match. They open a product, uh, a PDP, you know, and they have to uh, cross-reference the brochure that they've downloaded to the door that they think they've selected to see which one is right. Um, and it puts a lot of work onto, onto the buyer. So our goal here is not to, um, you know, add to cart and check out with a door. Um, this is to show uh, homeowners that um, this door brand has doors that are right for them. So when we start with this, uh, you know, exploratory experience, we're faced immediately with door recommendations. You know, we're starting off um, with a good foot forward. We want buyers that are on this site to be presented with options right away. Um, and at any moment, they can eject if they see anything that they like. So like Hillary mentioned earlier, 
we have the ability to, you know, prompt or query directly into the system. Uh, and I can be as fuzzy, I can be as subjective as I want. I can say something like, you know, uh, I'm a new homeowner uh, living in a Chicago bungalow, famous uh, architecture around here. Um, and I want to modernize my front door, right? So it's something as um, fuzzy as that will yield me product recommendations. And it yields me, uh, you know, as many recommendations as as I want. And in this case, I believe it's up to 20. Um, and, uh, you know, we didn't want to just show one or two recommendations with these experiences. We wanted to kind of channel a, a social media type experience where, um, you know, if you land on Instagram and you see 100 things in 30 seconds, you don't really mind because the algorithm is so tuned to the content that you prefer. We're trying to match that here as well. Give a lot, um, but don't overwhelm, you know, make it easy to compare uh, and contrast these options that are presented to me while um, providing really, really uh, pointed and, and really powerful recommendations. Um, so I'm going to refresh and start with a different option here. So I can go to the inspire me section. And like Hillary was saying, we're presenting the buyer with some guided uh, inputs. You know, this is a way for them to, um, you know, not have to custom prompt. We found that if, um, you know, users aren't really sure what they're looking for, just giving them uh, the ability to click, you know, point and click and just kind of get recommendations as they go through the experience uh, is a really great way just to make it easy. Clicking is a very intuitive um, you know, motion for shoppers online. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that we gave uh, users an option to to do that. Um, so there's a there's a good balance to strike too in these experiences. Um, you know, there's there's the fuzzy search like Hillary was mentioning, um, something very subjective like I live in a Chicago bungalow. I want to modernize my house. You know, not necessarily want a modern door. Um, that's a very fuzzy search. There are features that uh, exist in this catalog. For example, privacy level. Um, and that's a hard filter. You know, there's somebody that says, I don't want anybody to be able to see through my door. I want the 10 privacy level. Give me the most private glass that you have. This glass is near opaque. You can't see through it. This is not a fuzzy filter. This is an attribute that exists in the product definition, and we want to latch onto it. So it's a very fine balance to strike between what is a non-negotiable hard filter and what is a more fuzzy and semantic search. And it's a collaborative experience that we have with a client. For example, an apparel client, you know, if I'm going through a visual discovery looking for an outfit, the things that matter most to me are probably going to be size. Show me a really cool shirt that I'm not sure I would have picked on my own, but make sure it fits me. If it doesn't fit me, I'm definitely not going to go ahead and buy that, uh, buy that shirt, right? So that's what a guided experience can look like. And I'm just refreshing here to clear the palette a little bit. Those um, answers build upon each other. So I just wanted to start with a clean slate for this next feature. And Hillary mentioned this earlier. We have the photo upload ability. Oops, I'm on the wrong folder here, door demo, let's go. Um, and here I can select uh, an image. So there's this bright yellow wall with a red door. Um, and this, these are some types of middleware, you know, so to speak, that you can kind of include in these experiences. So when I hit go on this button, which I'll do in a second, um, this image is gonna be provided to an LLM, which will then describe what's in this image. And then we parse out what the important things are in that image to get a recommendation from. So in this example, you can get a suggestion based on the door in this image, or you can get a suggestion based on the wall. So that will be two different recommendations, right? Do you want a door that fits well on this bright yellow exterior? Or do you want a door that has the features that are in this image, you know, wooden, no glass handles, things like that. So at these points, when there's kind of an LLM interaction, you can kind of guide and, and create the prompts or um, you know, extrapolate important information that makes sense for this particular experience or what's right for your product line. So there's a lot of control that you have uh, with these experiences. So I'm going to get a recommendation based on the wall. So right now there's an LLM. It's reading this image. It's kind of deciphering what's inside of it. It's going to query for our product catalog for things that may match on that wall. And here's what the recommendation said. The image shows a red door set in a yellow wall. You know, the door has a keypad lock and a handle. Based on the wall of this image, here are some suggestions that may fit well. Um, and you can see that there's a variety of pretty light doors here um, because that's kind of what we decided to decipher from that image. But again, you can really raise certain um, uh, or you can extrapolate really specific bits of information. Um, and that'll make a little bit more sense in the next demo that I'm showcasing. So this one is a uh, visual discovery, uh, excuse me, three kit discovery AI, um, but the flavor is a little bit different on this one. Um, previously in that in that door example, 
the client was wanting to surface product recommendation and our product catalog in that case was thousands and thousands of doors. Uh, this is one of our clients that does dental operatories. They manufacture the equipment uh, and the furniture that's in this room. Um, and their configurator exists. You can see it right here, actually, um, to select the colors of this operatory. Um, so the difference between these catalogs is that, um, you know, I'm not searching for, let's see if my internet's going to behave here today. I'm not searching for a complete operatory when I'm using this so-called color concierge. Sorry, folks, I'm going to give myself a refresh here. This is going live tomorrow, so I bet there's an engineer plugging in some, some things somewhere around here. Um, so the difference between this e experience and the last one is that we're not searching for, um, you know, like a, a chair for this operatory, and we're certainly not searching for, for a door. Um, we've created what we call a color concierge uh, for this client. So our client was finding friction in allowing, um, you know, dentists that were redesigning their operatories to select colors in an efficient way. Um, if I go back to this, you'll see that there's quite a few options to select for colors, um, you know, and it's it's good to provide all of this granular control to the buyer. It can also be a little overwhelming if you're not so sure about what the countertops versus cabinets versus stool versus floors might be. So we came up with a solution uh, with our client ADEC to, to kind of streamline that process. And we call it the color concierge. Um, so again, let's just start with one of these pre-selected, uh, let's say Scandinavian comfort. So again, what this middleware now is doing is, is ex extrapolating information from this query, Scandinavian comfort. So um, this is a little bit in the weeds for semantic search, but I'm just gonna go there for a moment. So when you send a query to a semantic search database, what's really happening is it's going to query for that product data and find the closest match. Um, and lucky for us, um, or unlucky for us, uh, my gosh, this, our uh, engineers are really going for it today. <laughs> we'll see if it picks up in a second here. Um, so it's going to find the closest match to that, that query, right? So for an apparel example, you can say, there we go. Um, I'm looking for an outfit for a yacht party. Here's uh, a boat shoe. Here's um, a breathable wicking fabric uh, in case it's warm or you get a little splash on the water, right? That semantic search is finding the closest match to your query. The difference here is that we're not looking for product data that matches Scandinavian comfort. We want to extract colors from this, right? So we can read more um, and it'll kind of describe the colors that it's extrapolated. So when this query goes to the, the semantic search, it's actually, again, hitting that LLM middleware that we've created, much like that photo upload. And what we're saying is when you get this query of Scandinavian comfort, extrapolate colors that make sense based on this um you know based on this query so if it's scandinavia you know uh pull from your knowledge base of what colors maybe match that region um another example would be uh halloween themed this is actually exactly how we discovered this little nuance with this client is that when you would type in halloween themed it would go and find the closest match and they happen to have a fabric called autumn harvest it didn't feel very Halloween-y. It felt more earthy, you know, not so much black, orange, and purple. But from a semantic search perspective, Autumn Harvest was about as close to Halloween as you could get on that catalog. So that got us to think, oh, okay, so there's a point here where we have to extrapolate information. So when you hear Halloween, think orange, think black, think spooky, you know, this is the kind of control that you can have over the middleware. And again, I want to point this out because... Um, the the products that are being positioned on this discovery example are our color swatches for products. They are not complete products. So it's just a different flavor of the visual discovery, um, discovery AI utility. Um, and this one even has, you know, even uh, more of a unique um, twist on it in that it connects directly to an existing 3K configurator. Um, so it's a really unique um, implementation overall. Uh, and something that's very interesting for a client of, you know, um, positioning colors for their for their operatories. Um, but this has been a really great exercise uh, with our client. And again, one last thing I wanted to point out here are the the confidence messages based on these recommendations. Right? Um, we found that with these experiences, no matter how intelligent the application is, if you are kind of presented a selection of products or colors or whatever the end result is. Um, 
it doesn't always feel like there's something, uh, you know, quote unquote, intelligent or artificially intelligent or, you know, particularly exciting happening. The user is faced with, I feel like I've just been presented things based on a filter. How am I really sure that this is a right recommendation for me? And these confidence messages really, really drive the point home. You know, the deep black and gray tones of the grand grandiose grid uh, creates a modern edgy look. These messages, uh, again, you have complete control over with the LLM. You can prompt and say, you know, elaborate on point A or B, or my client will probably be more uh, uh, interested in, in this part of the product recommendations, or make sure that this confidence message includes a part of their query so they really know that we're listening. Um, there's a lot of flexibility that we have here, but we found that the confidence message really, really does do what it, it sounds like. And and make the end user confident that these these selections are correct. You know, you really want to provide a recommendation, tell them why this recommendation is really powerful for them. So then they can be confident that I'm going to add to cart. I'm going to get the consultation. I'm going to invite this person into my home and continue with, with my buying journey. So those are two demos I wanted to show you today. Um, thankfully, our engineers seem to stop working on this for a minute here. So we got some configurations changing, uh, but this will be going live. So I'm sure there'll be some co-marketing about this in the future, but I will hand this back over to Hillary to complete uh, the webinar. Thank you, Will. Uh, let me bring it up. There we go. Um, as is our goal with any of our implementations or, or using features like Discovery AI, it's all about actually making a difference to the bottom line, right? So in early um, results, we're seeing really, really strong ROI from executions like this. Increased conversion rates. Um, you can see how when you sell a complex product, if buyers are easily overwhelmed, they're going to bounce. But if you provide the appropriate guidance, they are mo more likely to stay on site and um, wind up converting. Higher order value, when you're able to comparison shop or when you're getting suggestions, intelligent suggestions from the system about complementary products that helps to build the cart. And then overall, just a better customer experience, reports of, of higher customer satisfaction, higher buyer satisfaction, um, and, and ultimately making a dif difference for the customer experience. Um, just some examples of of customers of ours who've gotten a lot out of um, both visual configuration and discovery. You'll see across the board here, we have Ulrich Barnes, which builds highly bespoke, highly customized backyard sheds and barns um, that have high high levels of configuration and complexity. They saw over 290% of increase in orders in the first 60 days that they went live with us. Lovesack, whose entire business is built on um, configurable sofas and sectionals. And as this entire category has really gone hard towards customization, Lovesack has been the one leading the way and they've been able to increase their cart value. And then finally, Tailored Brands, which... Um, uh, is actually the the master brand of um, Men's Warehouse and a few other uh, uh, custom suit companies, 30% increase in average order value as well. So across the board, you see high levels of complexity, high levels of configuration, and bringing the experience to the website that actually guides customers through and gives them confidence without the help of a salesperson. Just to give an overview of kind of the broad spectrum of our customers and clientele, everything from the retail um, space to furniture, luxury, doors and windows. And then you saw Will bring to life a, um, a great demo that, that lives in kind of the dentistry and medical supply space. So any, again, we, we don't try to limit ourselves by category or vertical as much as it is by we help companies with complex products bring those online and enable those companies to sell 100% of their product portfolio where they were not able to do that before. And that's kind of our bread and butter and building disco discovery AI into this into our product was just a natural next step for us. So we hope that you got a lot out of this today. We would love to continue the conversation. We'll be following up with each and every one of you. Um, and if there are any questions, I'll take a look. We can take those at this time. Uh, nothing in the Q&A or 
one question in the chat will where do you start when with a with a um a project like this you're bringing all of your portfolio to bear how do you think about what is needed on the brand side yeah i'm just going to show your mic so we don't have to swap sure. back and forth on the on the mute there um it's really not a huge starting point if there's not a full catalog that we're going to start with say it's a, a subset of products, we'll typically kind of decide what that is. Um, then we start with uh, a product um, data export. It could be just a, you know, export from a, a Salsify or a commerce export. It can really be whatever. Um, the important things to keep in mind on that export that are important for a utility like this are those um, really subjective kind of nice marketing type descriptions of a product. And that can sometimes live in the product description. It can sometimes be um, in a brochure, which we can extract information from. So as long as we have access to those really nice, rich descriptions of why things are, are nice or, you know, are X or Y, that's really helpful. And then of course, those non-negotiable hard filters. So if there's things like a privacy level or a size or a skew or a price or some things like that, that may be really important to a consideration um, that may not fit into that fuzzy category. That's also really important to, to keep in mind. Um, once we have kind of a um, you know product selection set or a catalog subset selected and some product information, um, we'll have typically been ideating on what that experience could look like, whether it's a visual, uh, you know, a discovery AI utility, or if it's a concierge type utility with a question and answer back and forth, um, that'll kind of have been decided. And then we kind of spin up a, a live data prototype. So we could say, this is kind of what that experience could look like or, or feel like really, because it's kind of a back and forth, like, um, testing of do these recommendations feel right based on the query, right? So going back to that ADEC example of when I type Halloween, I would actually expect to see these colors. So it's a collaborative exercise with the client because who knows products better than, than the manufacturer or whoever's you know engaging with us. So um, that's kind of it at a high level of select the products, um, narrow down what this experience could feel like. And then it's the live data prototype of do these recommendations make sense? Um, you know, how does the confidence message feel? And then we kind of kind of go from there. So I think those are the really the most important things to keep in mind. Great. Uh, one other question here. Can you share the recording of this? Yes, absolutely. We will be uh, in short order uh, reaching out to you, sharing this recording. Um, what is typically a, a natural ne next step is having a kind of a deeper briefing from our team where we can get into your challenges, your specific category and products therein. And usually within that first conversation, we're starting to bring to light 